give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. If you give mercy, you will receive mercy from other men. If you give mercy, you will receive mercy from other men. So, our first uh, path here is forgiveness, not living in the past, today. And I was thinking of, 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 of it, I'm sure some of you who are more gifted could come up with a better thing, but I said, okay, let me, let me put this into some quick words. Live in the present, reject the past, hope in the Lord. Past, mm -hmm. present, future. Mm -hmm. Live in the present, reject the past, hope in the Lord. Amen. And notice it's not hope in the future. Amen. It's hope in the Lord, because the Lord is our, should be our future. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Live in the present, reject the past, hope in the Lord. And as you're taking notes, turn to James chapter 4. <clears throat> Let's just get a few more scriptures on not judging. In James chapter 4, verse 11, We're commanded again to be merciful. It says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? So you recognize, we've talked about this before, when I judge, I'm also guilty not just of the sin of judgment, I'm also guilty of the sin of sedition, because I'm usurping the authority of Jesus Christ, who is the lawgiver. Mm -hmm. I'm usurping his authority. Mm -hmm. So not only are we guilty of judgment, we're guilty of sedition. So to avoid all that, be merciful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember not their past. Go to um, chapter 5, verse 9. Another aspect of judgment, false judgment. It says, Grudge not one against another, brethren, for least you be condemned to hold the judge standing before the door. To hold the grudge is to live in the past. <coughs> to hold the grudge is to live in the past, to remember a past transgression, a past hurt, a past wound. Mm -hmm. We are commanded to be merciful, to let all those things go, mm -hmm. to renounce those judgments. You know, Brother David and I were out um, yesterday evangelizing the Word of God, mm -hmm. and we were just talking about how easy it is from the world to speak judgment. And he asked where I went, and, talk, and, then, and then Brother David was in describing someone he knows, and he could be spoke judgment. And I said, he just did it. He said, wow. He was just speaking an observation, but I said, but just because of that, that's judgment. You just stated something from someone's past as if it's present. You just stated something from someone's past that is not only is it present, it'll be there tomorrow too. Because mm -hmm. that's what we do. He said, he is a hypocrite. <laughs> it's like, no, David, he's not a hypocrite. He has been a hypocrite. But right now, at this moment, he could have just got saved. Tonight, tomorrow, a week from now. So our language growing up is to say is, are. And then we put those labels on people, but once we enter into Christ, we have to stop doing that. Because we don't know. All we're called to do is to be a witness, and a true witness can only tell you what they've seen and heard. That's what a witness is called to do. And for us to be merciful, judgment can be part of it. Amen. Judgment doesn't go with mercy. And uh, that's what James chapter 2 says. Amen. Verse 13. <coughs> Talking again about the judgment seat of Christ, it says, For he shall have for he that judges, think of it as you read this verse, he that judges shall have judgment without mercy, judgment from Christ, without mercy. 
For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. When I'm merciful, it actually creates joy in me against judgment. Why? If I'm merciful, then my expectation of being in front of Christ, I'm being confident to stand in front of Christ, is not false. <laughs> I know I can stand in front of him because I've done his will. Amen. And he is not ashamed to be called my brother, <laughs> nor is God ashamed to be called my God. Amen. Amen. And he said, there's my son. Thank you. It's like what he says for Job. There's my servant. Thank you. There's my, he's so proud. So there's my servant. Say, there's my servant. Is God offering any of, any of us up? Or does he say, well? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little too easy. <laughs> oh, uh, go, up to, uh, go back to the book of Luke, Luke 10. Let's transition to the second uh, aspect of mercy, of being merciful, being helpful. Are we helpful to others? Are we helpful to others? And as a matter of fact, I can be more specific. Are we helpful to others in the time of their need? Mm. I say that because there are many people who are helpful, but not necessarily when someone's in need. See, my, one of my, my children, she's always trying to help daddy. But because she doesn't understand, she gets more in the way mm -hmm. than she actually helps me. So I've been trying to tell her, well, you should be helping me if I require or need the help. Mm -hmm. Not generically. Mm -hmm. All right? In other words, ask first, determine that I need the help, as opposed to just diving in. All right? And I've been thinking, well, that's just because of her age. But it, it dawns on me, even as adults, we sometimes help when the need, the need is not even there. Mm -hmm. But for us, we say, I help. <laughs> yeah, the person's like, oh boy, <laughs> I wish they'd stop helping. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Here in uh, Thank you. Luke chapter 10, uh, I was trying to figure out a way to shorten this, but let's just read the whole uh, story Jesus gives here, starting at verse 29. Okay. You recall he given him the first and second commandment, that's I love that God with all, with all, and love thy neighbor as thyself, and of course, one said, hey, you know, who is my neighbor? So in verse 29, uh, he went on to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side, and likewise a Levite when he was at the place, came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. Now, you recall, even though priests are of the Levitical priesthood, mm -hmm. not all Levites are priests. Mm -hmm. But priests are Levites. So, mm -hmm. we're, we're, talking, we're talking two people of the tribe of Levi. Just one is designated as a priest, and one is just a Levite who mm -hmm. serves in the temple. Mm -hmm. Okay? But both, and these are both Jews, pass by this other Jew who is wounded and leave him. They just pass him by. He's a He's wounded and they don't help him. But here comes the enemy. But a certain Samaritan, you recall at this time, the Jews and Samaritans did not have good relationships. Mm -hmm. The Samaritans are technically the cousins of the Jews because they come through, they come through um, Ephraim. Mm -hmm. And Ephraim, uh, if you go back in the Old Testament, Ephraim got kind of separated from the rest of the, rest of the tribes mm -hmm. uh, as they started marrying other people and all those that sort of things. So uh, they're, uh, they're half-breeds mm -hmm. to some degree. So Samaritans are half-breed Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay? But a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion, compassion on him. You, you'll find that often it's written in the New Testament, the word mercy is, is, is uh, replaced with compassion which is the last word we read on our list of words. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay 